हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो हियर वी आर एज प्रोमिस बिफोर विथ रैंक फोर्टी वन ऑफ दिस ईयर सोनाली देव एंड आई एम डिलाइटेड दैट शी हैज बीन माई स्टूडेंट सो विदाउट डिले लेट एस टॉक टू हर सो सोनाली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन फॉर योर ग्रैंड सक्सेस थैंक यू सर सर इट कूडेंट हैव बीन पॉसिबल विदाउट यू इफ आई ओ द सक्सेस टू एनी वन इट्स माई पेरेंट्स एंड आई थिंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दैट इट इज लाइक वट कैन आई से You just made me feel so much proud. Thank you. Sir. And uh, I would like to tell all my viewers that I was so much confident about her success that the first result I checked was her, and really I was like delighted. I I cannot tell you my feelings for what happened. Thank you, sir. So Sonali, so uh, now you are here, and uh, tell me something about how what. made you prepare for civil services uh so i think it was somewhere uh, my childhood dream only okay. because my mother is in government servant uh, government service and she would always say that uh, my is is this and my is like her superior used to be an is always so this is and that is so i always had this dream that i kind of want to become that is <laughs> so <laughs> so i think it stemmed from there but uh, later on it got more materialized as many of my colleagues friends mm. batchmates started becoming civil servants and then mm. later on you get to know that what kind of work they are able to do so that is i think uh, the last push that i got <laughs> so what has been your educational background uh, so i completed my engineering from delhi college of engineering in 2015 okay. and then after one year of work ex i went to iim calcutta to pursue my mba mm-hmm. uh, graduated in 2018 and then worked for another year in goldman sachs okay. after which i started preparing <laughs> yes i remember your mom was telling me mm-hmm. that she left the job very good job and yes, now yes. it is like very risky but again Uh, there is always risk in life when you want to achieve big things yes sir <laughs> so it took that risk so uh, you started your preparation in uh, which year specifically sir 2019 mid 2019 mid okay yes sir and uh, this was your which attempt uh, sir technically it was my third attempt okay first attempt i gave uh, like Re- during my job only just to test the waters mm. and prelims i think was such a disaster because my general knowledge at that time was zero <laughs> <laughs> i only knew finance i didn't even know the rivers of india so i think i started from that level i just knew ganga brahmaputra and that's it <laughs> <laughs> my general knowledge was zero from that i then started preparing so uh, what you specifically did for prelims Uh, so because i said that actually i had to start from scratch like general mm-hmm. knowledge was very big zero so mm-hmm. uh, once i had made up my mind so newspaper reading became very crucial part mm-hmm. then current affairs after i had gained a basic uh, understanding of ncrts and basic books uh, i think my go to strategy for prelims was solving test papers mm-hmm. so I used to learn from test papers only, mm-hmm. and uh, after reading a book also, if I've read a topic, I used to do questions. So mm-hmm. unless and until I did questions for the topic I've read, I would not be able to register it. Yes. And prelims is factual, so I think tests were the key yes, important yes. thing for me. It is factual and it is also quite analytical. Yes. UPSC sir. prelims and definitely that uh, for prelims. practice is the key because i really feel even if you have read everything till you are in a position to utilize it you won't be able to fare well in prelims and for that what is required is that you keep on practicing because with practice you will ultimately be able to eliminate the mistakes that you will otherwise do in the examination and that is essentially the key because we are talking today and uh, you know Uh, just after f- uh, four days on fifth yes, of June, there is prelims. So, do you want to give advice to the students who are going to appear? Sir, what I did for prelims, I think, which helped me a lot was that I had an Excel sheet. So, and for each subject, I had maintained one tab on the Excel sheet. And whatever mistakes I used to do on my test, I just used to write the mistake in like one line. So. Mm. 
and then that excel sheet was populated like every subject had 20 200 something odd entries so before the prelims i because uh, there is no point taking the test just before the prelims like mm. three four days before the prelims so i just did my mistakes mm. so i think that helped me boost my confidence also yes, yes. so that i should not be repeating the mistakes i have done in a mock test in the actual exam yes. Yes, that is very important so coming to the next part that is the mains G gs part yes sir. so uh, what do you think was the relationship between what you prepared for the prelims and what you uh, further did for the mains? So I think that prelims knowledge was uh, helpful in mains but it is only helpful to an extent that you can use it as examples, you mm. can use it as case studies mm. uh, and it can give you an edge of one or two points extra but mains is a bit different that you need to have that style of answer writing mm. so because if you have cleared prelims you have that knowledge mm. uh, but answer writing is again key so how to write that answer and you have to write general points first mm. like general points and then you can add on specifics that you learn from prelims in there also that we used to do in our optional classes <laughs> yes sir yes sir okay so <coughs> Very important questions which question which students face today, a big problem that is there. Because we find that there is in the market lots of uh, information noise, I would say. Because there is so much of information available. And when it comes to particularly uh, areas like current affairs, yes, sir. there is of there is too much of information. So how you filtered out essentially what you have to study and what were your sources particularly of current affairs? So in the beginning as you said even I was lost. I was uh, going after every current affairs compilation everything and then I felt after a month that this is not sustainable and this is this won't lead to any results also. Mm. So sir so after that I stuck to one current affairs magazine source. Mm. So I used to do that only and revise that multiple times. Mm. As far as newspaper goes I used to look at the headings but not go into details of the newspaper okay. because it is anyway covered in one or the other compilations. Yes. So that and sir, uh, there are many initiatives that will give current affairs questions also mm. on a daily basis. So before sleeping, like mm. 10 minutes, I would just see the current affairs questions so that I don't, I just don't miss on the particular peculiar details if there are any. Mm. So this was for current affairs. Mm. And <coughs> one more question which students are very much bothered about is how you are able to make a balance between the different uh, things which we have to study for the exam like you have to study your current affairs you have to study your general studies you have to study your optionals so what was your strategy of time management so first i did the static part very well mm. and current affairs was not my key focus because i felt that if static is done then i can add on current affairs in that mm. so for static i when i did my static i made very micro notes for mm. that only mm. on my laptop and as I said, I used to do current affairs magazines for current affairs. Mm. So if there is any particular topic that is overlapping, I would just note it down there only. Mm. So in the end, uh, I had very micro notes for subjects like uh, for polity. I think I had like only 50, 60 pages that I in the end that I needed to mm. mug up and remember. <laughs> so, so this was how I did it. Mm. So how you distributed time? Like for example, some of the students, they'll study all the three every day. Some would prefer like three days, they will allot for GS, three days for optional and like current affairs every day. So what was your division of time? Uh, so I felt that if I did one subject only a day, I used to get very bored. I get bored easily. So um, for me it was, I used to do every like a bit every day. So GS also then optional and then current affairs. Even in GS I would switch between subjects. Mm -hmm. Once I felt that I, it was getting boring, I would switch on to the other subject. I also really feel that uh, that has to be the better strategy when you are studying the three parts in a day, per day. Because what happens, suppose you are studying only one thing, you will get bored. And also what happens is that uh, there is something which we call it as Parkinson's law. So if you have suppose one work and you have 24 hours to do that then you will be able to complete that one work in 24 hours if you are devoted enough. But suppose if you have to do the same one work in 12 hours, again you will be able to do 
that in 12 hours if you are devoted enough so what happens work expands so make yourself targets where you are able to uh, compress the work in shorter period of time and if you are able to do that you will be able to cover all the areas uh, the three parts that we are talking about in a day and that is one of the most efficient strategies that i know for this examination yes sir okay sonali so coming back to uh, our geography optional because we have been associated for geography optional yes sir. so uh, while choosing geography as an optional what went into your mind what was the uh, reason you chose geography as an option uh, so because i was very naive when i started my preparation i was uh, i in my mind i think i had good academic records and i had just left my job so I, in my mind i wanted to do it in the very first attempt <laughs> <laughs> so so the first ncert that i think i had picked up was geography so i thought that i have to pick up an optional it can be any optional i'll have to study anyway so why not go with the first ncert that i picked up i will get an edge over time mm. but so i entered into it very naive so mm. uh, i don't think it's a very prudent strategy <laughs> <laughs> to choose an optional yes. but uh, i just deep dived into it so but then after studying i felt that uh, yes it can be done but then i think before i met you i was still misguided <laughs> on how it is to be done <laughs> so after uh, joining classes actually geography geography is a subject which has uh, almost everything for everyone so like uh, you might see that jo uh, serials bante hain jo soaps jo bante hain usme sab ke liye kuch na kuch hota hai to usme auraton ke liye bhi hota hai bachchon ke liye bhi hota hai teenagers ke liye bhi hota hai aur old लोगों के लिए भी होता है तो जोग्राफी एक ऐसा ऑप्शन है जिसमें सबके लिए कुछ ना कुछ है सो इफ़ यू बिलोंग टू द साइंस बैकग्राउंड देर इज़ फिजिकल जोग्राफी विच इज़ वेरी साइंटिफिक इफ यू बिलोंग टू सम आर्ट्स और अदर ह्यूमैनिटीज बैकग्राउंड सो उसके लिए भी देर इज़ ह्यूमन जोग्राफी विच इज़ वेरी बिग पोर्शन इकनॉमिक्स के बंदे के लिए भी उसमें बहुत सारा इकनॉमिक है सो वो जोग्राफी इज अ सब्जेक्ट विच आई रियली सी दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स वंस दे स्टार्ट दे फॉल इन लव विद Yes, sir. And so after reading geography, it felt like when I was doing mains answer writing, I used geography immensely in GS, in essay, everywhere. I am using geography examples in ethics. I am using geography examples in writing my essays. And GS one, so at least ten bilkul. questions yes. directly come from yes, geography yes, optional. Yes. And in fact, economics also you can solve yes, from economics. geography. Economics paper three is there. Paper three. Even in paper two, you get lots of help from geography. Yes, sir. And, and once you have that uh, knack of making maps, yes. then maps can be fit in everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, two thousand seventeen, one of my students was ranked five, Pratham Kaushik. and uh, i he got second highest marks in gs that year so i asked him that what i think maine class mein bhi tum logo ko bataya hoga yes sir ki tumne matlab gs mein kya lag kiya so he told me that i abused geography yes, he used sir. the word and uh, i told him to expand what what he meant so usne bataya ki i made wherever it was possible whether it was history whether it was any area i made lots of maps and without geography if i was not a student of geography it wouldn't have been possible yes sir mm. so same because after i attended your classes in fact not only my optional score jumped wo to obviously it had to go up but uh, gs score also jumped a lot mm. because i started using geography case studies examples maps everywhere in gs mm. so even gs jumped a lot mm. so uh, what you did specifically for your geography optional sir um, the first attempt uh, with geography optional was a very dis- big disaster because i was going after books reading everything and not understanding anything <laughs> <laughs> and the output was uh, in fact more positive more negative than positive mm. and even after putting a lot of effort i could not uh, get i got a very bad score of 173 mm. first attempt then i because but then i had a bit of base mm. of understanding so i joined 500 plus classes mm. and uh, so i took your words to the core uh, i remember you saying in the class that paper one mug up mm. mug up there is no other option that you have and sir 
um, I I diligently did all the classes. I made notes of all the classes, and then I sir mugged it up. <laughs> like there were three notebooks of paper one, and I remembered each and every word of uh, paper one that I had to. And as you sir rightly said in class also that if you mug up paper one, paper two you can easily apply paper one in paper two, and then it's only answer writing practice that you have to do. So so my strategy was that only paper one I mugged up the notes. paper 2 uh, the questions that you did in class so i had an idea how to write at least mm-hmm. so then uh, how to write then i used to uh, use my paper 1 knowledge and just practice paper 2 so practice more of paper 2 and mug up paper 1 <laughs> i want to emphasize this point because what happens i really believe that uh, there is lots of uh, rumor in uh, market you see that geography is not doing well this that so precisely you have to go into why geography hasn't done well reason has been because uh, what has happened since 2009 upsc upgraded its question paper but the market the coachings were not able to upgrade themselves according to the standards of upsc so most of the students they f- they had this lack of content lack of strategy how to ultimately do that so everyone was confused and in confusion they would do all the things they would try they will work very hard they will study this book that book that notes uh, in the end what was happening just even more confusion was happening and that has been one of the reasons in the past many years geography didn't do well but since we started we have been like trying to simplify the things provide to the students most of the things at one platform and this is the thing that if a student so if a student just follows the core which is essentially the notes and enriches himself or herself with little bit of current affairs linking here and there that is actually more than enough to perform very well in this option so that uh this is we are talking with now sonali and later you'll so see that i'll talk with other students who have got selected you will see that they will have the same strategy which right now sonali is telling me what happens most of the students because of their uh, over enthusiasm and uh, a feeling that they don't have to fail because of that what they will do they will study more and more and they will keep on getting confused and this is the the thing that i really feel that confusion is the biggest barrier yes sir for the students so yeah. first time when i was doing it from books and everything i think the more i read the more confused i got yes. and i had to unlearn a lot of things to start fr- with 500 plus so that unlearning also was one this, key. this is one thing i always start my 500 plus classes with if you remember so i always say that uh, when you are studying in 500 plus classes because it is almost like an optional yes. i in fact teach more in the 500 plus classes than many teachers are giving that in their optional batch so students have to do what they have to unlearn a lot then only you are able to actually better utilize that and that is where most learning is easy unlearning is more difficult yes, thing yes <laughs> so uh, what will be your advice for the students essentially who will be writing for example uh, the mains uh, geography this year in future so i think that uh, for me uh, 500 plus notes were my bible mm-hmm. so i have mugged them up like anything <laughs> so and i felt so that uh, directly or indirectly the paper was set from there so i could solve in fact directly also there were a few questions and after the exam also i met a few people who said that i wish that i had learned this like i have it in my notes i wish i could have mugged it up and why i didn't mug it up so i think the best way is that you should trust your notes and uh, just focus on those only because you will be able to solve the paper from that and answer writing practice for paper 2 becomes essential yes, so you yes. can write tests and yes. when you write tests test should not be i think test should not be given from the Uh, from a laxed point of view mm-hmm. so it has to be given as a 3 hour test yes, yes yes many students because in covid we found that uh, there was limitations so many students had to write from home and uh, in home you don't get that kind of yes, pressure sir. that you will be otherwise getting in the classroom so definitely when you are writing the test it has to be in the allocated time 
and that is uh, very very beneficial writing the test because test is more about uh, learning from your mistakes many students like i always tell them that don't look into how much marks you have got mm, yes, sir. look into what mistakes you did and what you learned from those mistakes that is the most crucial thing because once you learn from activity those are the things you will never forget in life that is one of the best way of learning that is no doubt and uh, you know uh, in 500 plus one thing happens coming to that point of unlearning because many students uh, complete their foundation batch from other places and then uh, when sab kuch bigad gaya to fir they will come to me ki ek sar kuch kar do and this is the problem which i face every year trying to make the students unlearn things yes sir and uh, you know uh, my 500 plus program is very famous comparatively the foundation program is not so much famous <laughs> but foundation program is much much better much much qualitative than what is 500 plus so i feel that if i had known that mm. so first attempt only i could <laughs> have given a good better yes. shot at geography so but then sir better late than never and at least i could join 500 plus in my second mm. attempt <laughs> okay so uh, coming back to what we were discussing so you you got your interview call finally yes sir what specifically you did for the interview um so my interview was on the very first day mm. um so 5th of april only first mm. day and i had around 10 days only and because i was writing forest also i didn't get much time for interview mm. but once the interview call had come mm. so the next 10 days i put in a lot of effort mm. i first of all um, segregated my daf into keywords mm. and then started uh, intensive google search on each word each and every word mm. plus uh, i was uh, because i had less time so i did utilize other stoppers notes for interview which they had prepared for example delhi i mm. because it i didn't find it prudent to make my own notes for delhi mm. when someone else has done it so for those but for uh, keywords which were unique to my daf mm. i made it on my own and so i used extensive help of my friends and family i allocated them each and every word and i used to tell them that please you have to do this for me and google it and so so i think interview is where i use my friends and family a lot <laughs> for help more the minds uh, predicting what type of questions will be asked in the interview it is always very very beneficial yes sir so sonali uh, again you you have made me so much feel proud So I am proud to be your <laughs> student. <laughs> and uh, that's it for uh, today, Sonali. And again, we will be connected with Sonali, and she will be coming to help you out. And in our classes also, she'll uh, tell you uh, more detail about her strategy and everything. So I think it is for today. Well enough. Good luck. Thank you, Good sir. Luck. Thank you, sir.